Hey guys, welcome back to Brothers Off Script. I'm Jerry. I'm Ryan. And you know what? We have not shot a off script video for almost 30 days. I, in fact, I think exactly 30 days because we shot our uh, um, prior to New Year's video and this is our first time back. Um, Coming in on February 1. February 1. There's a ton of stuff going on. There's a ton of stuff going on. Uh, we're calling this one uh, State of the Union, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Because... It just like, happened. It, it's hard to process this, but in the last 30 days, we have had bleep hole countries. We've had the memo scandal. We had we had the, the uh, Donald Trump affair scandal. Fake news. We <laughs> we had uh, the all the stuff about tax reform. We had well, okay, so a, a DACA fight. We had a government shutdown. The fight, we, <laughs> the fight continues. The fight is still ongoing. There is no end to the fight until everyone is satisfied, and that never happens because politics is politics. When people talk about being politically correct, politically incorrect, you're talking about a state of opinion. And if you believe wholeheartedly that you are right, no one else can be right. Uh, yep. There can be compromise where you say, "Well, you're right on." Uh, you're going to give me part of what I want, whether it be the wall or immigration or DACA. It really doesn't matter because they'll never be happy. They being Republicans or they being Democrats, yep. they will never be happy because the idea of them being unified essentially destroys the the need for them. Right? No, that's a good point. Like, if you were does, unified yeah. as a nation... There would be, why do you need two parties? Why do you need two parties? Why do you need four parties? Why do you need to destroy all independents? Why do you need to destroy all far uh, left or far right people? Because you're not unified under ideals. There's I can agree with you on this party and I can disagree with you on that party. But in the same thing, we have always said this before, we're all people. We're all living in this nation and we're all trying to do the same thing. And that is have a job. Have a good life. Have a good life. Provide for our families. And hopefully someday get to retire. Do the American dream. And then pass that whole mm -hmm. thing on to our kids. Yep. As it is, that's not likely to continue. There are too many things. And I'm not saying like next year, next month or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm saying like our generation, our next generation, the millennials and their our descendants, will probably not have it the same. They are more sensitive, whether that's good or bad. Mm -hmm. um, they are more willing to accept um, that things aren't right, so they're more willing to try and change them. Uh, there is there's a lot of progress happening, while at the same time as removing rights from people, you're giving rights to people. It's well, the polarization is increasing, right? Like yeah. the separation, it, it's it's getting to where. And it, I suppose it's been this way for a while, where you can't talk about an issue. You you get so wrapped up in the the politics of the people involved that you're not really talking about the issue anymore, right? And and the personalities involved. So people are mad at Donald Trump because they don't like Donald Trump. And when and when you ask them, well, what do you think about taxes in general? Not separate from a party, separate from Donald Trump. What do you think about taxes? What do you think about abortion? What do you think about Are you talking about a Kimmel on the street skit where they don't actually know what's going on and oh, it's targeted uh, I and think edited? That, I think there's certainly, there's there's elements of that, but I'm talking about, I have personal conversations with people and I ask them, you know, okay, if we separate these people, the personalities out of this, I did the, this a lot during the election when I was talking to my friends, I say, you know, what do you think about, uh, what do you think about imports and exports? I've lost, I've lost jobs. Okay, I personally have lost jobs because my company that I worked for couldn't compete with steel that was immigrated or that was uh, imported from South Korea and Japan. Yeah, we had the quality, but we didn't have the cost, and we couldn't compete on cost, and so we were losing orders. Right, that was a fact. It was something we understood and we knew inside of our building, and the only way we could try to beat that was by being faster to the market, so we could promise a faster delivery time, or we could promise you know, right. better service or better replacement. Made in America is, is but we were losing a, a slogan that a lot of people uh, on the right have, I mean, I'd say that some people on the left too have, have targeted that as a, 
as a good thing? Yeah, historically, that's been a democratic issue. Historically, the Democrats have said, like, because because it's a very pro-union position, right? right? That trade is bad and trade imbalances are bad. And these dirty Republicans and these dirty one percenters are taking advantage of people in poor countries and they're putting American workers out of, out of business. And so we need all these things. And then the Republicans have been always been the free trade party that they always wanted more trade, more trade, more trade, less restrictions, less, less tariffs. And then we have, but now we have Donald Trump and Donald Trump's running a very populist government based on populism, you know, meaning the people in the country are, are, you know, it's what they feel. Maybe not what's necessarily better. And party, that's party, how he's driving. Party lines aside, you've got some progress being made. Now, whether it's political maneuvering or... Do you mean economic progress? Yeah. Okay. I would say based on whatever numbers they want to spout. Um, Unemployment's down. And across the board. Specific unemployment stock, stock is down. Mar stock market's up. But for the people who have a job, they don't notice that. Unfortunately, yeah, that's I true. don't notice. I don't notice when less people claim welfare because my taxes don't change. That's I don't true. notice that um, there's more people on the road than usual because the roads are terrible. I don't notice that things are better because my life, specifically the me, yep. nothing changes for me on a day-to-day -day basis. When some politician says I've re reduced taxes and I've increased wages and I've reduced employ uh, unemployment and I've made it better for the system. I don't notice a difference because what I signed on for was a nine to five that paid so much dollars per hour. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do my job because I'm me, because I want to get paid for right. what I've done. And I think that that's where the disconnect is, is that we as people, most Democrats, I would say most Democrats are not welfare are not welfare users, are not people who are in a situation where their life is going to get better or worse depending on what politics does. To yeah, them. that's not most of the country, right? If you assume that the country split, split basically 50-50, and you certainly have people at the lower end of the, of the income spectrum that are Republican and people who are lower end of the spectrum that are uh, Democratic Democrats, and then you have independents and uh, at all spectrums, right? I think that's totally fair. To some say. of them have jobs, some of them don't. Yep. The, the the party line says, if you don't have a job, I'm going to provide for you. Whereas some party lines say, if you don't have a job, get a job. Right. You know. So that's the disconnect. There's really that people feel disenfranchised because of racial lines or whatever. But you've got a choice being an adult human. Hopefully you're an adult human and you've you've decided to make the choice to provide for yourself so you can afford internet, so you can afford a phone, so you can afford to watch our channel, and in which case you are not part of the problem, you are part of the solution. You are doing your job. The people who are feeling like they don't get paid enough so they decide to strike, like recently in Seattle, uh, the, the bus drivers mm. going on their 15th strike in 10 years have decided to say, we don't get enough health care. What does that mean? What is health care? Health care is something that you provide for yourself. Be healthy. Don't smoke cigarettes. Don't drink too much. Don't eat too many junk foods. Don't eat a bunch of sugar. Live your life the yep. way you should to live your life as you want to and not complain that somebody else has got it better than you, in which case you should probably be able to live a long and productive life because you had a job, you did the thing you needed to do, and you ended up never really using your health care until the very end where Medicaid kicked in or something like that. And we've, I've had health care for uh, six or seven years now, as long as it's been mandated and then a little bit before that. And before that, I never needed it. Mm -hmm. And before that, my parents provided it. Have you, have you decided, have you changed that since the individual mandate's been... Uh, it's not technically gone yet. Okay. It doesn't end for next in, year. I think it ends in January. And honestly, I'd probably drop it. But at the same time, I don't want to foot that bill. So as a responsible adult, I'm going to decide to mm -hmm. pay for it. No one's going to tell me I have to do something. I'm right. going to decide to do it for myself. And as heated as I am about this thing, it's all the choices you and I make as adults for our families, for ourselves, for the people that are gonna be affected if something were to happen with us, it's still a choice. So as long as you have the choice, and as long as you have the choice, as long as I have the choice, 
we should make it for the better. Not just I need to save 60, 80, $100 a month on my healthcare bill. In theory, according to people, it should go down in cost because of you know competition. Mm -hmm. And that's usually what happens. The, the gas station across the street is two cents less than the one I was gonna stop at, but two cents less, so I mm -hmm. might as well go over there. So hopefully that's what happens. I can't predict the future and I'm not gonna try, so if that happens, maybe I will go on a cheaper plan, but more than likely, I will keep healthcare. I'm not gonna be one of the 20 some odd million people who's gonna lose healthcare because I decided to opt out. Mm. I'm gonna be one of the many millions who decide to continue to pay for it out of my own pocket on a weekly basis, whether I use it or not. So that's a choice. Yeah, it is a choice. And it should be. Um, so I wanted to say too, like with all the scandals that have occurred, um, one of the things that I've heard people talking about is this idea of like, well, should we respect people in offices because, you know, they agree with some of our perspectives or don't agree with our perspectives. And the, the, the whole, like the best illustration of this is the whole Roy Moore thing, right? So Roy Moore in Alabama is running for Senate. He lost, right? But he was getting supported even though he was accused of, you know, ass assaulting kids. Basically, assaulting 14, child, 15, child 16 year old girls, right? Was the, was the charge, but um, so the character, I will say the character does matter and should matter. Now, does that mean that I would support, you know, the other guy in the race? No, it doesn't mean I support the other guy in the race, but the character does matter. Donald Trump, I'm, I, I firmly believe, and you can look at just his marriage history and just his way he's lived his life. I don't think he's a nice guy. No, I don't. I don't make any excuses for his behavior. I don't make any excuses for what he said. To, to people or about people or his tweets. I don't make any excuses for any of that. I don't think he was the best person for the job. I really don't. But he's got the job. And some of the things that he's doing from a policy perspective are, from my perspective, they're good things because I'm going to have more money in my pocket, right? If he's a I don't have to agree with it. I don't have to agree with everything he says. I really don't. I don't have to defend anything. But if I had to pay less money in taxes, from my perspective, that's a good thing for me. The concern is, is that 10 years down the line, when he's not in office and somebody else is, that they're going to raise the taxes. They'll more. never do it, though. The, the rest of those dudes are too scared of getting in trouble. There's no such thing as a, as a lack of tax increase. I mean, well, I, I played SimCity when I was a kid. And <laughs> the simple trick that anyone needs to know if you're deciding to go retro gaming is you lower the tax rate by 5%. Everybody cheers, yay! And then you raise it by 2% and they go, boo! But it's still lower than the original tax rate. So you kind of get away with it. Now, if the next person in line, and I, I honestly, I don't think he's gonna make it two terms. I don't think it's I don't think he'll make it two terms. Um, but these four years, as chaotic as they are, as polarizing as they are, that's mm -hmm. the problem. If you had gotten someone else, anyone else, ex Except for Hillary, I don't want to say it, but except for Hillary, because I don't think that she was a good person. I don't think also not a good person. I don't think he's a good person either. But I think that if if the same things had happened, we'd see no change, and more of the things that could essentially topple the dominoes, because that's what everyone's worried about. It's like all these things that he's doing; these are going to set up the dominoes, and that's what's going to topple them. It's like if nothing had changed, maybe terrorism would still exist to a bigger degree. I think there's been progress on the military front. ISIS certainly has been just decimated, right? I mean, they've lost thousands and thousands of square miles of territory that they held. And this that all happened in the first year while we had hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, wildfires, none, school shootings. None of his none of his policies have affected or would have changed anything that has happened, which is the unfortunate fact is you can't step into office and instantly become a deity and take on all these problems. You literally have to deal with the cascade effect from the previous administrations. Yep. Several administrations, going back to Bush and Clinton, you have several things that have been lined up. And if anything happens that's in a positive light, it's maybe your paycheck gets a little bit bigger in a couple of months. Literally, this month, our paychecks should get bigger. Yep. And if that happens, will you be happy? Will you be a little bit more likely to say, it's not that bad. 
which is all any politician wants you to say is mm -hmm. wants us to be acquiescent and wants us to be passive and not go crazy and tear down the Capitol building and set it fire again right. and literally destroy the system that they have been building for hundreds of years now. And it's you and I are a, a small voice in the wind when it comes to any political change. But if anything, if a voice at all, more of a whisper. But if anything, to anyone that listens to us, this is just an opinion. I think things could be worse, but I also think things could be better. And I'm hoping mm -hmm. that in the next couple of years, that's where we get to. That we're able to come home after a long, hard day of work that we chose to go to and we didn't opt out of and we didn't take welfare to, to soothe right. our wounds and care for our families, we're able to maybe buy something nice on Valentine's Day. Coming up, go ahead and check that out for your loved ones. Um, it's, not, it's not about whether you have to, it's about whether you really want to. I don't wanna to go to work every day, but I do, because I need a paycheck and I need that paycheck to pay for things that I want and things that I need, such as house and food and water and electricity. If you can do better without those things, you know, I, I really don't know what party you politic you, you subscribe to, but uh, mine, Republican, Independent, Conservative, it doesn't matter. I've got a plan for me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Other things coming up this week. If get that's, off the, if that's off the how politics. you want to do that. I do. Um, we got the Super Bowl in a couple of days. I hope the Eagles win. I hope they do just to because just to I hope the, the Patriots. Patriots lose. The Patriots are terrible and they should lose. And they're excellent, but they're terrible and they should lose. Uh, and the Eagles need it. Um, what else we got? We, so we're, we're going to the Super Bowl party on Sunday at your house. I'm really excited for that. Um, and then it's the weather's getting we're, better here. We've got a ton of projects. We're overdoing it. I just got to say we're overdoing it as usual. Good. Too many dips. That's a problem at parties. We have, I'm worried because I've been keto and I've been really good. This is we week have, five we for have me. The hummus. This we is have week five for me. I haven't weighed yet. Away. I'm really excited though. I feel like I've done really well. I think I, think I was on graveyard two steps this. back. Two steps Ugh. back. And I'm going to eat a bunch of crap, I think. Keto. Resolve. Okay. I honestly think we should devote an entire new video that you guys should be subjected to for this particular topic. But I've talked about it in the past. I've been on keto for uh, seven, eight months now since July last year. He's lost a ton of weight. I lost 40 pounds. I feel way better. Um, I changed my pillow recently, so hopefully that'll help my neck problem. I don't think that's keto related. Okay. But anyways, I've lost weight and my brother's MB is clearly showing so it is i feel envious he wants to he wants to drop i'm copying become felt i'm copying his my younger brother so who is bigger in my bigger effort, younger brother we are he has joined keto for over a month now yeah and and we just joined the gym we are now the planet going fitness. to the planet fitness hopefully we don't get the old lunk alarm i've watched some videos on that um but if anything goes wrong then you know we'll come back and we'll tell you guys about it so yeah it'll be interesting i've lost 15 pounds so far and we'll see how it goes progress is made yeah politically personally financially hopefully yeah and uh we'll let you guys know what's going on uh pre-valentine's day so. awesome so lots of other projects going on we'll update you guys as those as those come down the pipe um check out our other videos thanks for watching we really appreciate it see ya